So now we've set up free radius on our Linux machine and now we need to configure it. So we will go to our router page and we will log in again. Any router should be able to, to, to be usable for this purpose as long as they support WPA Enterprise. And that's the, uh, that's the setting right here. So the setting that we used before was was this for pre-shared keys, but when we're using when we're using WPA Enterprise, we need to click this one. So that's the one that we're using for this demo. That's fine. We need to change the IP address to where our virtual machine is, and that was 1.3. This one needs to be testing 1.2.3. I know for a fact that it is testing 1.2.3, so We'll just leave it be, and we will click Apply. Yes. Just wait a few moments. And as soon as this has finished updating the settings, then we can go into Kali Linux, and then we can do a test run, see if it works. Because now the router is redirecting any authentication requests to Kali Linux down here. So now it's configured. Let's have a look. It's ready and this is really good. So now 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 it's working. So we will just go full screen again and we will try and connect with our mobile phone. So I'll just open it here and I'll just go to the login screen. So it looks like a normal locking, locking screen almost, except that it's a little bit different. So I'll just check it, yes, you can see it right here maybe. Okay, so I'll just type in admin password, you know. So here we go, and then we will click join. And you can see something happened on the screen right now. If we look at the mobile phone, because this, this is the first time that this phone hasn't uh, has used this corporate uh, LAN, and because it doesn't have the certificate installed on the phone, then uh, the client has to accept it. So you may be able to see it right here. So we'll just click the. We can also click at the more details button first, and you can see the details that we typed in before. Just have a look, maybe. So we'll just go back and click Accept. And as soon as we click Accept, you'll see on the computer screen right here that more stuff happens. Right now, it hasn't captured anything because it's still waiting for the user to click Accept before the credentials are sent. So we'll just click Accept. And you can see that it worked. So that's, that's very, very nice. So we'll just confirm it. You can see that the file is now created and it's ready again to serve another user. You can even scroll up a bit and you can see that it says creating challenge hash with username admin. That's what I tried to log in with. And it may scroll, if you see it a, f a bit further up, you may be able to see some more stuff. You can see that this is where the request came from, the router. Ah, that's the username. In case the corporation that you're testing legally, that is, is using computer authentication, you won't be able, and they, all, they have also configured it correctly on the clients, you will probably see a computer name here instead, or you may be able to see a computer name and a username, but you won't pick up any passwords. But it highly depends on the clients, like how the clients are configured. So let, let's have a look at this, this log file. You know, that's the interesting, interesting stuff. So we'll just cat it as in read. And you can see that we have admin and we have a challenge and a response. We can use asleep to, to crack this if we want to. Let's asleep like this. We can also use John, which is a lot faster and a lot more powerful, I believe. So we'll just copy this right here, copy. 
admin, yes. Make sure that we have the first username. We also have the last bit here, or it's a byte actually. We will just open a new window right here. And then we will just make the adjourn, put it in here. Uh, access test one, whatever. Control Shift V. And it's copied in here. Delete the new spaces if you want to. And close the file. So now we can just run John against this. John is quite fast with extremely weak passwords, but if the password is a lot fast, like not faster, if it's if it's a lot stronger, then it's a lot. Then it will take ages or forever to try and crack it, especially if it's more than like four or six digits. So, but for password, you will crack it right away. So you can see it it runs, and it gets it. This is where the username is, and this is the pa this is the password that I tried to log in with. So before we uh, before we you know before we end this video, let's try and make John crack a few more a few harder passwords just to see how well it can crack some uh, some harder passwords. I would say because this was almost too easy. And while I log in, sorry about that, we will just. Look at this file so you can see what's happening as well. So this file will be updating automatically as soon as I try to log in, which is quite neat. So we will say another user is trying to log in. Just make sure that the username is spelled correctly. And this time a different password that's harder. So try this one. Login and let's try another. Uh, let's see. Okay, we'll just call this guy user and we will make the password even harder just to see if it's in the word list that we are going to use just for fun. user and let's let's create a last one just for fun so we have a little bit of playroom so we will just do it like uh, like this let's see I don't think it will crack the last password but you never know I'm using like letters and dictionary words which you shouldn't use, but this should do. So let's just disable wireless on this device and let's try and crack these passwords. So we will just get free radius. Let's see, we can stop this process now if we want to because we're not going to do any more of this stuff. Just go John, access, yeah, sure. Nano, access test two. Administrator, yep, that's the new one. Copy and paste. New line. User. And the last one, guest. So I'll just copy this. Here we go. That looks good. You can see if we run John now against Access Test 2, uh, it will probably, you can see it's not instant anymore. So that's a clear indicator that it may take ages now. So we'll just cancel the session for now. And we will look at, we'll use a word list. We'll use, I just wrote lo locate word list. And we will use SQL maps word list. See if we can crack the passwords. So we will use John, word list is equal to, and here we go, access to, and enter. Let's see. It found one of the passwords that I typed in, password one, two, three, but not the other two. So that's that's a shame. And you can even say just show. 
but you have to remove this, I guess. Unless it's like this. I think you have to remove this when you are just using show. Yeah. You can see one password cracked, two left. So you know that was that was nice that it cracked that fast and that word list is actually quite big. It exhausted uh, that word list with 1.2 million lines in like uh, what? How do you, like three seconds or something like that? Let's see if it even says it here. It doesn't say it. So let's try another word list. You know, say locate word lists. We will unzip this one. So we'll say G unzip. And we could try. Uh, let's let's just try the rock you one because so share word lists because the rock you word list is fourteen million. So that's that's a that's a nice number. So we will try and use that instead. So we'll just go here. We go. Yes. Just go back to our directory again. John and we also John word list is equal to this one here. Access test two. Run it again. See what happens. Nah, it didn't work. Maybe the passwords that I tried to crack are too hard. I don't know. We could try other cracking tools to see if it works. Uh, or mutation rules, uh, not rules, rules. But let's just call it a day for now. And we'll try and crack some more passwords in another future video and show more different ways to crack passwords. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe.